Welcome to all the films and jokes before. I'm Katie, and that is the newly birthday to the K. Ah! <laughs> Don't ask me how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I didn't say. <laughs> okay, good. Um, all right. Uh, this is a very special day. Uh, not just because I had my birthday yesterday, <laughs> but also because we have a guest. And uh, Katie, I give the oh, stage you want to you. do it? Okay. Yeah. Well, if we could all welcome lovely Owen Mackin to the stage. Right. We have put a Hello. bunch of upload in here. I didn't know your birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now it's very special, so I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I, I'm very, very good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing all right. Yeah. yeah. Still yeah. alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, no, you're doing fine. You just had your birthday. So yeah. You're, you're, you're in a great mood. So, you yeah. Know. Yeah. Okay. You, That's. Lily doesn't qualify for that question. Katie, how are you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> because today actually is Katie's brother's birthday. Yeah, it's my brother's birthday today, yeah. I mean, I need to go find some <laughs> It's very unfair. <laughs> we can make up a it can be your birthday as well. I, today. I'm sure one of, my, one of my mom's dogs has a birthday in December. We can, we can, you know what? If they, if they don't, we just give them one. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to decide it's one of the dogs' birthdays today as well. Just, well. Or tomorrow. Tomorrow. Then we have a nice little kind of mm, three day, nice. three day birthday nice. celebration, we, like a festival of birthdays. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, one of, that works. Perfect. We know when one of our dogs' birthdays because she, we got her when she was a very small puppy, like a couple of weeks yeah. after she was born. But the other one is a rescue. Um, yeah. And he's he was roughly three when we got him, so we just sort of celebrate them at around the same time in September. Oh, uh, that's smart. Yeah, but it's just sort of like sense. his birthday's. It's it's the same day now. He's he's, <laughs> he's, he's not going to mind too much. The fact you're celebrating his birthday at all, and he's a dog, is kind of quite quite lucky. Well, uh, yeah, we just you know give him you yeah. know, be like happy birthday. And then we just... <laughs> the, thing, the thing is, what dogs don't like is dogs don't like like birthday hats when you put hats. No, on them, like there are, we have many pictures of um um. Because we put our Christmas tree up not very long ago, uh, like a few days ago, and we have a bunch of antlers, and just every mm. year we just try and put them on the dogs, and they hate them. Yeah, it's 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 odd how they really, really, really dislike being looked at when they're dressed up. It's strange. It's, mm. it's yeah, it's just, our dogs. Put, you, you put the antlers on him, and he looks really sad, and then two <laughs> oh, minutes God. later, he'll he'll have just knocked it off. Yeah, he looks really sad and nothing like a deer at all, which no. defeats the whole purpose. This is yeah. true. Well, unless it's a Labrador. No, I mean, I Labradors are pretty good for. That's you know. true. That's true. Well, Labradors are good. Yeah, well, yeah, that's Labradors look good in everything. Though. That's true. That's true. Tess is, yeah. is part yeah. Labrador, but she's also part Retriever and part Collie. But she's she looks more like a seal than anything else because she's got these sort <laughs> of. <laughs> she's got these little. It, it, she kind of will flatten her ears, but on her head, and she's like, "You are a seal today." <laughs> <laughs> you know, we keep doing this like we we are movie podcasts guys mm -hmm. right. still, right. Uh, but but we end up talking about things that are not movie related. Um, and my favorite thing didn't came up just yet so i will bring it up it's the hair day and owen your hair is great so you know it's like yes like always like i always admire your hair <laughs> like you oh, know like, yeah. look well, at, look I, well, behind I, me. I had a, i had a shower this morning i didn't know we were doing a video podcast so that, but I, I did have a shower luckily so that that's how that's why it's fluffy it so, looks nice you know well i mean it, it does its thing <laughs> Yeah, I get that one. <laughs> uh, but but just to uh, be on topic uh, and talk about movies, you actually have a movie uh, that just came out and you directed them. It's Here Are the Young Men, and uh, Katie was lucky enough to see it. I wasn't. <laughs> it's oh, no. it's, uh, it's on Netflix in the UK, but it, it's not in Hungary at the moment. Yeah. So I, I I I got the chance to watch it. it was yeah, it was really good. <laughs> I really enjoyed oh, it. Good. Oh, good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I believe we have a bunch of questions regarding here are the young men. Sure, I, I, I ask, ask away. Because <laughs> I, I, I wrote it all yes. down. I had like a yeah, whole yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. and then I was like, I'll read it. I'll read it for because I, I was like, I, thought, I said, I, 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 I'm here to answer written down questions. <laughs> I said, um, so I was. It was really interesting. It's kind of like kind of uncomfortable look at almost toxic masculinity in young men. Um, uh, it's sort of mostly at the detriment, detriment to the safety of the people around them, as uh, in particular. Um, uh, I was wondering um, what made you want to tell this story in particular. Like, what was it that it mm. kind of brought it? What, where did you get the idea from? You know, that kind of thing. Well, well so I, I did. It's actually from a book. Ah. Um, 
and and I adapted the book and I met the author Rob. Um, I wrote a book about five years ago, and then I met Rob. Rob's book was in this category for this Irish Book Award, and I met Rob and I and I read all the other books because I wanted to see what they were like, and uh, and see what the competition was for the book award, <laughs> and uh, and I thought Rob's book was, was was brilliant because it was actually I found it really. It was really well written, but it was also very visceral and also quite quite uncomfortable. And so, when it came to the producer Richard Bulger, who made here, and wanted to make my book, and then I was like, "Well, there's just something about just because I've already I'd already written my book, I didn't want to explore the same characters again." Mm. But I was able, I sort of used some of the elements of my book and put it into an adaptation of Rob's book. And partly I wanted to make it was because I just saw the potential from a cinematic point of view of, of, what it, of what it could be and what it could sound like in the music. But also because I thought a lot of the themes, even though Rob's book is set in 2002 and written, was written five years ago, were really similar. And, and I, I thought that idea of and the concept of having um, male friends uh, who kind of lead, lead, lead you astray, I think is still very similar now than when it was when I was that age. Mm. And that's kind of what I wanted to explore. And, and what I liked about, like, I like Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers in terms of their, their kind of the moral tales, the tales about <clears throat> the media and so forth. And so I wanted to, I didn't want to make a coming of age story that was a, a direct um, narrative observation of this is what happens A to B to C. I kind of wanted to make more of a kind of a, um, a, 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 uh, a look at it but then allow you to take I didn't want it to be easy it was meant to be uncomfortable mm. and I wanted it to explore themes that are uncomfortable on purpose and to kind of you know because I thought it was I think those, those themes and those elements are still really important um, and that's kind of why I, why I ended up making it yeah I definitely yeah. came across I really liked all the sequences um, set in the the studio I thought oh, those were, were quite um Especially quite visceral, uh, vi visceral. God, I can speak. Mm. It's a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can talk. Yeah, yeah. The, well, the, 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 those, those sequences um, in the book, the character goes to America, and I wanted to do it in more of a metaphorical way. So, kind of because it is looking at kind of the evolution of, of, a, of, a, of a, a sociopath leading, you know, and, and I thought that was important to kind of get into his own mind. You know, I love watching films like Bronson and romper stomper and mm -hmm. that type of thing so I, I did I sort of pushed in that in that way to kind of really push the characters to, to kind of amplify what they were going through because it is meant to be a film and it's not meant to be a a, a kind of a it, it's meant to be heightened in that regard and um, even mm. though I want to keep it grounded but on purpose just push the the barriers of, of what the characters are going through on purpose to and then also the kind of push by doing so hopefully you as an audience viewer question the morality of all the characters are going through and whether or not you agree with them and their actions or not that's the kind of mm. yeah i got I mean, very much the impression that uh nobody was particularly okay <laughs> like no, yeah, that's what no, you brought me no. no. <laughs> like, everybody's just not very well <laughs> no it's, no it's not a happy film no no but 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 the music's great but then the music elevates and makes it happy true. and the then you get is very good food. Okay. Uh, you know, when Katie wrote me that she actually watched it, I was like, oh, I'm going to go on Netflix and watch it as well. But <laughs> Hungary, uh, fun place to be. I couldn't. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was, I think that was the second thing you wrote. Like, I feel like they are not okay. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> you know what? Uh, lately, we are getting all of these movies and, and TV shows, especially where people are just not okay. And I don't know why mm. it became such a big thing or are we just more focused on it because of the events that we went okay. <laughs> yeah, like. right. <laughs> so you know because i saw that this was supposed to ca uh, came out in 2020 Is well, that no, well no we were actually meant to so we it, I, I don't know when we're releasing hungry because we're still we're still waiting for our releases in like in like france and germany mm. and a lot of europe what happened was we we were meant to release the the very first month that COVID first happened, and oh, okay. and so it's been a long release. And every time we went to release, then every time we like we were meant to do various film festivals, and and then festivals would get cancelled, and then we had to do online ones, and we couldn't do online ones because they they were they weren't secure. And it just and then every time we were meant to do a physical screening for festivals, and the festival get cancelled, it was like rain dance, mm. phony. It just went on and on and on. So it was like a year of but like everything you know everything for the last year and a half has been upside down yeah so that's why this film was sort of 
released in Ireland and the UK and America six months ago, and then we did Irish cinema last week, and then we're still waiting to do France. The whole the whole model of filmmaking, at least for this film, has just been, you know, yeah. all over the place. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah. It must be nice to have it out in in Ireland Finally, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Irish yeah, cinema yeah. as well. Yeah. It, would, it was good. It was good just to get get people there to see it in the cinema because that's kind of what it's designed. It's a it's a it's a funny kind of a film because it's you know I designed it so I wanted it to feel like you're in a nightclub and you should be drinking tequila when you're when you're listening if you're watching it, um, and you don't get that effect off your TV and your laptop in the same way you know because when you're actually in a in a cinema, some films have that same effect, some don't. But because we shot it in an anamorphic and I very much wanted the the visual style and the music to feel like you're in a nightclub for quite a while and kind of heighten that deliberately. So some of it's pushed even further than you would want it to be. So when you're watching a your laptop, like this might be a little long, but when you're in the cinema, you're sort of completely engrossed by it and you can't leave. And that's kind of part of what I kind of wanted to do from a sensory point of view. So it, sometimes it has that effect, but but cinema is kind of really where it needs, mm. to, it needs to be for that. Yeah, we're both um, big proponents for making sure you go see things in the cinema. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Can't believe you guys didn't fly to Ireland and come see the movie. I mean, I wish. I mean, my mother would have l probably loved me to do that. My mum's from <laughs> Limerick, um, and she's oh, always, there you go. Yeah, she's always trying to. Um, she actually one of the questions I have is from my mother because she oh, wants yes, to know yes, what yes. you thought of Limerick because you 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 uh, you filmed all of uh, Night Flyers at Troy Stur Studio. Yeah, 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 I lived in Limerick for like six months. I, I love Limerick. I've got family who who are from Limerick. Ah, there you um, go. So I mean, Limerick. I mean, you know, of course, I got family. Limerick. Limerick's like two hours away. <laughs> That's true. You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. In this podcast, we we really like Katie's mom because <laughs> okay, she's, okay, she's cool. just lovely and and okay. she's always so excited for guests and everything that we do. And I was like, she told me that uh, my mom has a question for over, and I was like, <laughs> yes, I know, I figured <laughs> she's gonna have a question. Um, but uh, I also I have IMDb up because IMDb is you know it's a good right. source. Uh, and I can see here that uh, you are working on, on another movie that you also wrote the gray elephant well what can we know about that or can we know anything sure well no we shot gray elephant last year um okay, we, okay. Shot, we shot gray elephant in november october last year and um, mm -hmm. the lockdown and it's um and i worked with a lot of people who i worked on the night shift like jill flint and nice. and uh, uh brendan fair and, and and james james rock and and aaron richards who was in merlin Yes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's Aaron Richards, who plays, who played Gwen's girlfriend nemesis, I guess. What was her name? In that? Um, um, because myself... Lily's in the middle of rewatching at the moment, so I feel like I... <laughs> yeah, because <I'm> not... <laughs> not... Aaron, Aaron comes in at the end of season five, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 But season I am. Five? I am. In, uh... Wait, where am I? I'm at season four, so I'm not there. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. my, I'm doing my rewatch part. part well, you, you get you get to you get to look forward to it, Aaron. So, anyway, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron's in Aaron's in Grey Elephant, and we're releasing that uh, next year. Okay, and and, and that's uh, I'm guessing that's going to be a wide release, or yes. what's the plan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have no idea. I did, but that, that whoever is releasing it will kind of tell me what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, this um, is very funny yeah. beast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. So. <laughs> it definitely, and and I saw that. Um, wait. I, I have it here. I wrote it up because I'm very professional, obviously, like <laughs> Katie. <laughs> uh, that you also have another movie coming on. What a surprise. Uh, is the, this one. Everything I ever wanted to tell my daughter about men. Uh, and on that one, you are also reuniting with, 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 with Richard Wilson, who played Gaius. So, so yes and no. So no, in terms of that movie is by by um, a, a, a great woman called Lorian Hines, and she mm -hmm. um, the, she's that was a play as well that she written. But the way she's done the movie is it's all intertwining short films. Oh. So that that whole movie is like sixteen short films. So I only worked nice. with with Lorian. And and all the male characters are different um, parts or elements of 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 the main character's life or kind of interactions. Oh, okay. Um, so so I didn't actually work. We none of us actually work together because they're all short films that are connected. Mm. So, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, but you know, still. Sorry, sorry to burst your bubble now. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. I even told Katie um, like, oh. 
<laughs> it's okay. Um, we is it is it Alien? Because I didn't check then. Uh, I think I think it was playing in the Austin Film Festival a month okay. or so ago. I'm not sure what Lion's plan of release is on that. I I couldn't I couldn't tell you because I don't I don't know. Well, we 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 have our ways to find it. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, in one way or another uh i would give katie the chance to ask something well something. i want to switch back a little bit very quickly to hear here, here are the young yes. i just mm. found this question that i forgot i wrote down um but just as like a little easter egg thing i was wondering if carney's um la brea jacket was an intentional um or is that just a complete group? No. <laughs> no i actually didn't even realize that until until the movie came out and then it was in the USA, and then in I think it was in May or June, and then someone someone sent me that, and I was like, "What the fuck's this?" And I was like, <laughs> "Oh yeah," and I I actually have that. I think I have that jacket upstairs or in storage. So, you, you know, I think I actually have it in in a in a in a closet somewhere. But no, that was that was not intentional at all. That was our costume designer who really liked that jacket, and then um, so nothing to do with La Brea. That's just some weird random coincidence. The universe was sending you signs. The, the yes. universe. The universe is telling me, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering because uh, I we were curious. My mom and I were curious. If you, um, La Brea filmed entirely in Australia, from what I could find. So yes. What was what was that like? What's 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 filming in Australia? Well, Australia was great, and then and then it became less great because <laughs> we went into lockdown for for three months. Oh, and yeah. After that. And then um, I didn't realize. No one told me, or I didn't realize because clearly I didn't understand geography properly that. Um, South Australia, Melbourne gets winters just like Ireland and England. And it's oh yes, basically <laughs> the same, if not worse. So I went Boy. from from winter to winter in lockdown. I was like, so. Yes. But everyone oh. in Australia was great. Australia was fantastic. It's just we were in a lockdown for three months now, or four months. I just it felt like felt like been in, we all been in lockdown forever, and I'm just like I can't anymore. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it does feel like that. It's, oh God. Yeah, but. Yeah. You know, I, I was just glad that I could move around this year at all. I, it, yeah. it, it, it finally a little bit, you know, easier to to go back and forth. Uh, I was able yeah, to let, 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 let's, so. not, let's not get into a credible conversation. I feel like I have one of those, I have a credible conversation <laughs> every day with somebody in some shape or form. It's just that's every, very every, true. It, it yeah. always comes and, up. And I, and I feel like I know I know less about what's going on, even though I've been talking about it every day for a year and a half. And yet I feel like I know less of what's happening than I did a year and a half. Yes, yeah, that's, that's true. Right. <laughs> yep, yeah. yeah. At this point, I'm just not checking it. I just is. Yeah. Yep. it's like me uh but yeah it always comes up um all right uh i think uh we we are gonna do a little bit of nostalgia uh okay. questions oh, yeah. uh <laughs> because i am interested to know like how the whole acting dream uh come to be and and were you always uh one of those people the weirdos like me the theater kid <laughs> who wanted to do this or <laughs> are, are you are you a weird theater kid I am <laughs> still. Congrats, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, no, I, um, I, I, I didn't like acting because um, I was very oh. shy. So um, I did one play in school when I was about 16 and I had one line and it was terrible. And it was a musical and I had one line on stage. My mom gave me advice on how to say this one line because it was that bad. It was for the hot Mikado. And I, I, so I just did never, I never did theater in school because I was very shy and I didn't want to stand in front of people. So I hated it. And then in college, I didn't want to do it either. And I only did it because me and a friend of mine couldn't play football and they were trying to drag people in to, to come to this play or audition for this play. And we were like 19 and we had nothing else we could do. I think we were both hung over because it was like freshman in college. <laughs> I was like, all right, fuck it, we'll go to this play. Um, and, then I, and then I really liked it and did this play and then loved it. And then, But that was partly because I didn't feel that I was able to, you know, because um, I always wanted to write and writing was what I did in school. But mm -hmm. I didn't ever feel that I was able to act or make films or do any of that type of stuff. And it was only then when I was about 20 that I was like, oh, I can maybe explore acting and filmmaking and stuff. And then I did an indie film and then I fell in love with everything. And then I realized I was able or allowed to explore that. So I just didn't have the confidence to to go into doing any of that. So that's how that happened. Okay. That's, you know, we, we I, I love this question. Uh, we always ask our, our guests because it's, uh, it's always like, you know, I think it's a general assumption that uh, if you're an actor, uh, you must have loved it all your life. And I think you're the third or fourth one who said that actually, 
No. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, no, no, it's funny because I'm actually quite envious of people who knew they wanted to be actors and they're like, you know, 10 or they went to drama school in their 18s. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and I only, I only get into it when I was like 20, 21, 22. And, and, but I, that, that was because I was just very shy and didn't have any confidence about it. And then it was only after going, I went to New York to do some modeling and then I studied acting and I met an acting coach in New York. And then I began to sort of really, really, really enjoy it. But I found it very uncomfortable to start off with. So. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But don't envy us because uh, so far I was only able to achieve in filmmaking terms that uh, uh, I am the Sean Bean of extras. <laughs> well, congratulations. She, Thank you. She, I mean, named this. <laughs> very... that, that, that feels like a, a good moniker, a good title to have. <laughs> I named this when she told me, like, ah, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> you can around do it, the time <laughs> when we started talking and like hanging out uh, online and stuff, this was about last year, she was telling me that she dies and everything. And I went, oh, so you're Sean. Sean Bean. Sean Bean. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that, that, that does sound that does sound appropriate, right? Yeah. It's yeah. It, yeah. I I'm yeah. just gonna. Because he does die. Name. He does die in most things. That's true. Yeah. And yeah. And he always but, dies well. Yeah. So yeah. good. Like uh, he's he's my master. He doesn't know, <laughs> but <laughs> he doesn't realize master. it. Yet. You know. So if you ever need someone to die in the movie, <laughs> yes, I <laughs> I will I will I will keep your mind for all. Of Thank you. I I offer okay. my services. I'm okay. very good at dying. <laughs> Lily does all of the interesting sort of extroverted actory things. I'm back here being like, never put a camera in my face, but I'll stand behind one and help out on set as much as I can. Yeah, it's a lot more relaxing that way, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, sometimes it, it depends because I, I've been doing a bit of runner work um, in the past couple of months and uh, that yeah. can be. Uh, well, yes, well, no, I, okay, I say can be, it can be. It can also be far more stressful as well. Mm. It de depends. Everything is relative. This is very yeah. true. Yeah. That's very true. Uh, Katie? Yes. Um, so I like asking this question because... Um, That's... I think hey, I know what's it, Yeah. Yes. So because <laughs> we are a film and TV podcast, I like to ask people what their um, sort of favorite type of poison is, I guess. Are you kind of more of a certain person who gravitates towards films or TV? Or, I mean, you, you write books and, and I know you like writing. Are you more of like a... How is, how, what's the way that you like most like to like engage in your storytelling, basically? Um... I don't know. I've actually found it's changed. I mean, I found the last year and a half changed a bit because I, mm. I, I you know, there's been a lot more alone time, um, which I, which I initially enjoyed. Um, so I kind of go through periods. I find that I watch television or films depending on what your, what your mood is, like everyone, right? Like yeah. So you know, um, but I actually only watch darker, sort of heavier stuff when I'm in a really good mood. So when I'm yeah. actually not... That's me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like... yeah. When, when I'm feeling down or feeling unhappy or, or feeling tired, I usually watch absolute nonsense. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I understand why people make this now. This is great. Um, and then when you're feeling feeling more kind of inspired or on top of stuff, then you want to watch stuff that's more challenging, I think, mm -hmm. or a bit a bit headier. You know, and same with reading, with reading as well. But I always find it, I don't know about, about you guys, but I, 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 I don't work well if I'm not reading or writing properly but if i'm reading and writing then everything else is easier and i'm happy so i need to be reading things otherwise i find like i'd be and i found it harder to read in the last year or so because there's been so much stuff going on and so much more time on my phone or reading news or just doing stuff on the phone and that that's actually stopped me reading as much um i do find yeah. that i i am more creative when i'm inspired by something that i am like actively sort of engaged in at the time yeah. so whether it is like a book that's actually really um you know I'm really enjoying or like a TV show or anything like that then and if I go through sort of dry periods where I'll I mean I'll be watching stuff but nothing's like clicking I yeah. won't write anything or and they can do anything really particularly creative and I feel very sort of stagnant so I, I always need something that's like that I, I'm feeling particularly like a lot of love for and yeah feel exactly, exactly yeah yeah, because because then it, it just it just feeds into what you're doing, and then yeah, no, that that that's 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 exactly how, how I find. But then I and I also find that like you know it's it's it, it's important to be you know moving and doing things, even if that's you know being outside or walking. Just where the last year and a half has been a little bit more. Deep. You're like, oh, this is great. Have all this time at home to write, and then you're like, you just don't want to do anything. No. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, I wrote yeah. A, a script for my my final project in university when I uh, where I graduated. I, really, I graduated three years ago, and it kind of it was one of those things where I did so much in short such a short period of time that it like I I love writing, but I have had absolutely no creative juices pretty much since then. Where I'm just sort of like I think about the idea of like actually getting into like a project or writing something new, and I just got to go. 
No, I'm still tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because it gets exhausting. I, I find when, when, when writing is very tiring. So, you know, you need to, um, it does actually kind of drain you when you're writing, you know, because it takes a lot of energy. So uh, I, I usually prefer to write in coffee shops or bars or, or on trains. Yeah. So the last year and a half has been very, uh, hasn't been conducive for me. So I'm like, what the, fuck, what, the, what the fuck do you mean you can't sit in this bar in a coffee shop? You mean you're closed? I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. So that's, 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 that's been different. But no, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, find, I find just just certain types of films and music that help in terms of trying to write the same. When I'm writing certain types of films, you want to write. But I, I write, try and write eight or nine different things in the same, constantly at the same time. Not on the same day, but there's different stuff. So like I'm writing a horror film, which which I only have to do another draft of, which I really like, but I haven't written it for six, seven months because I really wasn't in the mood to because it's it kind of upsets me to write it. So I have to be in a really good mood to write it. Otherwise, yeah. I can't do this. But, also, you know. but if it's a, it's a horror film. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, look, I'll end, up, I'll end up making it about two years and we'll talk again in two years and they'll be like, why, you'll be like, why'd you make this? Like, I don't fucking know, but just somebody liked it. And, but I'm exhausted from it, but you know. Uh, I'm not going to lie, Katie knows this. Uh, I am a huge lover of But it's horror. set in Limerick though, so... Oh, nice. oh great there you go <laughs> we can I mean, all go. Go. this, this, this go. really yeah. feeds into the plan that my mother has where she wants me to move over to ireland and get a job at Joy, troy studios she's like you ah. should just go do that and i'm like i don't know if it's that easy but okay <laughs> perfect there you go so sorted oh. done. done all sorted yeah. and um you know i i uh i think uh especially with writing because me and katie also just finished uh my book so book. Oh, congratulations <laughs> thank you uh, so you both finished your book so yes Emily wrote the book and then because she wrote it in hungarian um when she translated it i went through and i basically helped tidy it up and make sure that the translation uh, was uh as uh, mm. as as fun to read as, as the story was itself so i just kind of went in and yeah put a bit of flavor on on some of the, the yes. writing yes. basically the, the, i mean yeah, to you, be you, fair you, she put you a lot wrote everything didn't you I <laughs> no i did everything is i, I really i would really because i i've been told many times that i have a very specific um voice in writing and i really didn't want to like overpower because lily's story is so great i didn't want to i didn't want to come in and just sort of like put my stink all over it so i really tried my best to like take what it was that she was doing and just sort of like put it into words that sound a little better in, in English than they might do, um, you know, directly oh, translated nice. from well, Hungarian. Congr congr congratulations to you both. That's oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but, uh, you know, now that you said it, it's so true because uh, now I started writing the second book uh, and it's just, it right now it's painful. I, I just can't uh, sit down like I have the idea or I feel like I have the idea, but whatever I write down, it's like, yeah, no, I hate this. <laughs> Let's um, move it aside and then um, I move it aside for a month and then I just don't do anything with it. And it's so annoying. It's it's like I have the time now to do it and I just can't. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Brain, please yeah. work. Yeah. Just, no, I, I know it, it, it does. It. You have to be in the right, the right headspace yeah. for, for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. that's 100 percent true. Um, OK, so um, I have a very serious question. Sure. <clears throat> Do you know Maya He? Oh God! The, the, from the song. Oh, God, you know. <laughs> this is uh, Lily trying to. It's it's inject it's my jo yeah. dad jokes into it's, the it's conversation. It's my dad joke. It's <laughs> Maya He. And then uh, yeah. yeah, and then Katie Katie. And then, right. and then you go Maya Who. Oh, Maya Who. I'm not, I'm not going Maya Who. Okay, yes, I get, yeah. I get that. Yes, I, but I, 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 but I knew what you, I knew what the song was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, she it only to... works with those. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I'm sorry. I mean, she that, tries that, to... that, that, that is that is a very much a dad joke, but yes, but unfortunately, I do know that. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. I have like a thousand written down next to me. So <laughs> she tried to drop this on me last time we recorded, yeah. and I just went no. <laughs> You were very. Mean, we're not baby. doing this. Oh god! Oh god! Very mean. Oh no! Oh no! I mean, I feel like now you have to sing that whole chorus. Well, how's it go? Um. Uh. <laughs> I think it, here's the thing. If we try to do that, YouTube may copyright strike us. Yes, that's that's the that's uh, the that's possible. That's true. the worry because uh, they even copyright uh, stroke us because uh, I think you used like uh, two seconds from a trailer. And they were like. <laughs> No, no. Uh, um, they, they they do that. 
Yeah. Yeah, they are fun people. We love yeah. them. Uh, but we do have uh, some questions from our listeners. Sure. Um, and uh, I will go ahead and uh, read Beth's question, mm -hmm. who asks, you have played sci-fi roles and historical roles. Uh, would you like to play anything that may be out of your wheelhouse or do you prefer those roles more? Is Merlin history? Oh, Killing Jesus is historical. I was going to say, I was like, is, is Merlin historical? I think it um, kind yeah. of counts as sort of like a period-ish, even yeah, if it is yeah, fantasy, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it, I it, guess. It, in a way. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. Um, <laughs> and, and sorry, the question was, do I prefer either? Uh, yeah. um, no, there's no preference. Um, it's not, I, I, I mean, I, I actually, funny enough, fantasy and sci-fi, I think, are quite similar in terms of in terms of mm -hmm. the, the, the fiction. I mean, they're the, both the kind of elements of or the books that I like to read and I like to watch. The favorite stuff I like to watch is usually fantasy or sci-fi, and they're the kind of same with the stuff I like to read. You know, like reading Asimov or David Gemmell or some other type of stuff, or or watching sci-fi, watching fantasy. So I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I just, I just like being involved in cool stories. I'm like, I'm just happy yeah. to be there and be involved in cool projects. So if we could do like an historical sci-fi. That would oh. be great. Yeah. I'd be into that. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, well, that I don't know if that makes any sense, but, I mean, but it could be it, kind it, of like um steampunky in a way. Yeah. I think, that kind of vibe. Yeah. yeah that would yeah. be fun. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm having a look at these um, questions and find a good one here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, find a good one. Okay. Uh I, I will next to Beth, uh I will I will also ask this question because I don't think I agree with most people, but you were in, uh, in Resident Evil. Yes. Uh, and do you which, count which is that? definitely an historical sci-fi. Yes. It is. <laughs> but do you count that as a horror movie as well? Yeah, I think that is a horror movie. I think, I think, I think. That, that's be... where I don't agree with. I, you know, for me. <laughs> <laughs> brings up a question just to. <laughs> well, no, I, well, I think, I think, I think the original Resident Evil w w was, was a horror movie, but it's like an action horror. Mm. You know? It is, yes. And, then, and then, then the later ones became more kind of action. Action, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah, definitely, yeah. It, it, like, I mean, the computer game, the original one used to scare the hell out of me. It was definitely a horror. Oh, horror, horror. <laughs> yeah, the, the original Resident Evil kind of almost like defined the horror elements of, of uh, computer games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think, it'd be, I think it'd be a horror, but it'd be a light, light horror. It's not scary horror, but it's still horror. Yeah, I, 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 okay. I get now, that. Um, with, with like, this one, I, I can get on board with this one. Because <laughs> okay. the, when, when it comes to horror, it's like there's the, the genre of horror that's like monster based, which isn't necessarily particularly scary, but it still counts as horror. Sure. That's, what, that's, why I, that's, that's my argument for the whole thing. Fair. Do you I mean, still, that's a fair point. That's a valid still, argument. Yeah. yeah. Do you still play games? Do I play games? Yeah, because mm -hmm. you mentioned you, you just said that you played the original Resident Evil. I'm just wondering if you still if you yeah. still are, are up to date in some um, current not, gaming. No, not 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 really actually. Um, no is the short answer. Okay. Um, <laughs> I still I still play stuff like FIFA and all that type of nonsense. But, I see. But but not really. I, I don't really have the I don't really have the patience to play games. I actually prefer to read books. The minute I start playing a game, I end up playing. I just play books, read books. And to be honest with you, I mean, uh, yeah, a good game can definitely, <clears throat> well, take no, your no. time up. Yeah, I, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, look, I, I know a lot, a lot of friends and I know have been playing online games like the last year, expect, you know, especially the last couple of years because mm -hmm. that's the way of playing and communicating. I just, I just haven't really done it. So no. Yeah. yeah. Fair point. I, I haven't really played computer games since I was really a teenager. I keep, I keep owning a computer, and then I have games and I never use it. So. Mm. Fair enough. Fair, fair. Did you find a question, Katie? Yes, I'm going to do this one. Uh, this one's from uh, Sasha Fine, I think is how you... Sasha Fierce? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. um, she's wondering okay. how you chose the actors that you... Um, how you chose the cast, basically, for, for your movie, Here Are the Young Men. Young Men, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, kind of, kind of like, kind of like every movie. Um, it's kind of just about... Uh, I don't really like doing... Um, I never did it did do additions and stuff because it's always like you you know I, when you're working with really good people you kind of know they can do certain things you kind of know they're really talented so it's more about finding the right people that fit the characters and then discovering what their thoughts are on it and then I, so just so yeah, I usually just have coffee and then figure out this is who I kind of want to have to play this part have a chat with them see if it works for them like with Travis or Dean or, or Finn or anything and see if they work and then if they, they're into it and they kind of have a certain version of what the character can be um, mm. 
then you could have put all the pieces together and you have to see like what's really important is seeing how chemistry works like when like shows like Merlin and Night Shift and stuff work I think to a large extent because like Jill Travelick cast Merlin really well I think because she cast actors who not just because we all got on and became friends that becomes irrelevant to a point but it, it becomes relevant because of how it comes across on screen but also because of how people fit so I think when you're making a film it's about the chemistry and the dynamic of how actors fit together and how they kind of how they're because I've been in projects where actors just 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 have different styles of acting or they just don't fit in the same project so it's very important to kind of figure out the the chemistry and dynamics and that's why sometimes when you know people and you have a coffee with them we've worked with them before I think sometimes you can understand how people how people are and then how mm. they're going to they're kind of sort of going to navigate working with each other okay yeah yeah, that's completely fair. Yeah. That which brings up the question, like uh, um, with the Merlin cast, because obviously Merlin ended when in uh, 2012. 20, yeah, 10 years. that's it. <laughs> that nearly 10 years ago. Do you no. still have contact with uh, the guys behind me? Or uh... yeah, yeah, I talk, I talk, I talk, I talk to, I talk to, um, I talk to Tommy and Tom Hopper both today, and I think I saw Rupert in London about a week and a half ago. And I still talk to Alex and Bradley and, and Katie. Yeah, I talk to loads and talk a lot of the crew as well. So yeah, we all still touch with obviously Aaron. So mm. yeah, um, so yes, is the answer. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. I, as, as, as a big Merlin fan, <laughs> that's a yeah. relief. I'm like, I'm always so worried because when a cast works, you are, I, I'm always just rooting for them, which is, I think it's, I don't know if well, it's but, a weird thing. No, like, but, 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 but we, like, I mean, I was, I was still in touch with, with Colin and Katie for a long time after we finished, but then then you end up being in different countries and doing different projects. Mm. Sometimes I just then don't talk for a couple of years because you just someone's in Canada, someone else is yeah, in, yeah, yeah, and then I you just don't see. And then you see each other a couple of years later, and you still be like we're still best friends. But we all on Merlin had a really close relationship, so yeah, everyone everyone's still very very close. Yeah, good, good. I love that. Um, I will also. I mean, ask... I lived with Bradley, so I wanted to be there. <laughs> Yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> um, there is a question from Estef, Estef Rose. Uh, okay, I don't know if it's it's going to be a long answer. Uh, what is the meaning of each of your tattoos? Um, <clears throat> <laughs> uh, the the first one I got was because it was. It was written uh, it was a piece of, of writing for my dad because my dad wrote a book and the first tattoo I wanted to get I wanted to get a phrase that he'd written so I didn't get the full phrase because but the phrase is more yeah but it was from a book that he'd written and it's it's got its own meaning for it and then this one here is the last line I was going to get a tattoo with a friend of mine like uh, this tattoo is the last line of my first book by that one there um because it, it's about life and how life, everything in life should flow and should if, if stuff is going to work it's to feel, feel easy with relationships at work you should just follow that that path of least mm. and then this one is because uh <laughs> self and a friend of mine who's a, who's a very famous rock musician had never got a tattoo before and um we basically did a paper rock scissors as to why she got <laughs> tattoos and then she got one of the other ones and I got I got the balloon dog and that's kind of how it happened. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we love that it's like that. Yeah. I have a I don't know if you can see it. I have a star here. Mm -hmm. And this was literally because uh my friend was bored. <laughs> there you go. Good. <laughs> Done. And I was like, yeah, like sure. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so here's your canvas, do what you want. There and you she did it, exactly. she did exactly. star. And then I was like, yeah. okay, <laughs> fair, yeah. fair game. Um and then um we have many questions, like mm. so many people wrote. Uh, I will pick uh, one more, and I think I will go with Cinnamon Toast Crunches question. <laughs> I love cinnamon these names. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's Crunch. not the question. No, no it's not. Okay. <laughs> that's the name. Uh, <laughs> that's Stop the it. name. Okay. Um, okay, this is a good one. Can you walk us through your writing process, both novel and script writing, if you don't mind? Very polite way of asking well I'm, I'm going to finish writing a script after we finish this podcast i'm going to have a cup of coffee and and sit down and write um because i've been putting off finishing a, a, um, a draft of a, of a different book i'm adapting and my my writing process is uh hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know um it's very much i just like to um i write notes of what i of what i think it should be and i write them sort of 
um, thoughts of, of what I want certain things to happen with the characters. And then I usually just like to, um, if you're writing, if you're rewriting stuff, it's very different because when you're doing redrafts, it becomes more specific and you're trying to find things. And then when, once you change one thing, everything else changes, you have to reconnect everything. But when you're writing something from scratch, I just like to write it. And I like to, <clears throat> if I'm writing a book, um, like the third book I've written, which is finished, but I just need to do some edits on it. I just like to write it. And then you find as you're writing it that certain characters you just like more and just kind of just follow their path and just kind of let it happen and just kind of just go with what the feelings and the emotions are. And I kind of like to try and write write how I feel about that. But then if I'm not feeling like writing or I don't want to do that story, I just won't do it. Because I think for me, I have to really enjoy the characters and the story at the time, unless you're doing a rewrite for a script when you've no choice but to rewrite the fucking thing. And then it becomes a bit more exhausting because you have to very specifically um, link things. But if you're writing something from scratch, I very much just like to have a plan of what it is. I usually figure out what the concept is and figure out the um, the idea or the story, however you find that. If you're having a dream where you go for a walk, or you just read something, you listen to something, and you mm. see something in your brain, and then you just let the story happen when you're writing it. Nice. Yeah. And a and a cup of coffee next to it, I'm guessing. Oh, about twelve cups of coffee. Oh yes. Jesus Christ! <laughs> yes. I usually drink I usually drink a lot of coffee when I'm writing, and then just but I write in bursts for like three hours, and then I'm really tired and and then want to go to sleep for a week. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I've uh, uh, I I every once in a while I think I should go back to the script I wrote for my my final project because it's not done, it's too long, and it desperately needs like editing down. But every time yeah. I look at it, I go, oh, I don't know what to do with this. I mean, <laughs> you just, have to, you just have to you just have to re just start it, you know. Yeah. What I mean, I, but I also find this nice leaving stuff. I used to hate rewriting stuff, and I used to hate leaving stuff, and then I became a better writer. I well, better, but better, better than I was uh, by learning just how to go back to stuff and then you kind of when you leave stuff and then come back to it you see it differently and then that kind of helps you be more critical and yeah. stuff because when you're first written stuff and it's fresh it's harder to see it then you have to come back and go ah oh, that's what that is you know mm. okay, okay. katie did you find um, another well, one somebody here then pedro i uh, want to ask how steve is and i don't know who steve is and i'm wondering if they steve steve is a blind dog Oh, okay. Oh, that I was that I was fostering. Now, Steve was great, Pedro, and um, Steve was fostered or adopted by a woman in New York, who I think is a TV presenter apparently, and has moved Steve to New York. I have no more contact with Steve because he's a dog, and they don't contact you in general. And, <laughs> Disappointing, um, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was just fostering Steve for the first six, seven weeks of COVID because. They were, you know, they putting a lot of dogs to sleep in a lot of the, the pan, animal pounds. So a friend of mine asked me what I look after a dog. And I was just like, okay. And then she delivered this blind little dog to me. And I was like, oh. And then I looked after Steve. And then for the first six weeks of the COVID lockdown, me and Steve were mates. That's so sweet. Yeah, he was great. He was great. He just, he just walked into things a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's blind. Yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So, see, Pedro he probably still has headaches, but that's good. So, uh, Katie has a similar question. I <laughs> yeah, I wanted to know how Bill is. Bill, actually, no, I can, I can get Bill. Yeah! Yay! <laughs> Thrilled. Um, yes, I am too. <laughs> Special guest. Another one. We have two. <laughs> Oh man, gone. It's it's always nice when you have special guests. <laughs> Just you know, in general. Uh, I'm, wait, I'm looking at the questions, but I I think we asked everyone's questions, we did we not? Them. Yeah, I think we're I think we're pretty much good there, to be honest. We asked cinnamons. We asked sashards. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yasmin's. We didn't ask Yasmin's question. Yeah, the Yasmin's question. Yeah, which is a good question. I'm also interested in the answer. <laughs> uh, so Bill's fine. Oh, yeah. hey. Yep, he's uh, oh, still, still chopping along, doing his doing his thing. Whatever the hell, whatever the hell Bill does. <laughs> no, Being Bill. Huh? Being Bill. 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 Yeah. He just he just still he's still Bill. Bill's been here in my mom. I'm uh, Bill has just been living with my mom for a while, and uh, because I figured that you know me and Bill had enough time together. Even so, space. 
yeah, we needed to step away. Yeah. You know what I mean? Otherwise, people start yeah. to know a bit mental. So, <laughs> you know. I love that um, every animal has such an American name <laughs> in your life, like uh, Bill, Steve, and we have Brian. because Brian's Brian, an Irish uh, name. <laughs> but yeah, I know, uh, but uh, I, you can't see it, but it's, it's the B on the photo shoot, which you answered that his name was Brian. It's, uh, uh, right. yeah. And I, because yeah, I, I was like, I didn't even notice that B. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I like, yeah, I, I, I don't know why. I mean, I, and I don't have any friends who are called Bill and Stephen. No, I do actually have friends who are called Bill and Stephen Brown. There you go. I don't know why. They just, they just sing. I, you know what, the names, you don't choose the names. You know, the yeah, animals, fine. the animals choose the names. That's fine. I feel like yeah. those, those kinds of names are sort of like, yeah. We need a name. Oh, let's just call him like Bob. Like, <laughs> yeah, which, 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 which is a good name for an animal or a stuffed toy. That's oh, true. Yeah. That is true. Um, also, we have one one more question from a fan. Uh, our friend Yasmin asks, um, would you be able to tell us about your favorite memory from Melbourne? Which also interests me, so I'm listening. Because <laughs> yeah, we weren't uh, listening before. Yeah, I was listening. Oh, okay, it's okay. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't i don't i don't know what my favorite memory is from Ronan. um because honestly we had such a nice time doing that doing that i mean um what, i mean <laughs> you see this this would be a stupid answer but what, one of my favorite things was the fact that then you you know we, we are when we were filming by the castle in pierre phones in france so the best thing was always going to film in france because then everyone felt like a big family and we're all there for a couple of weeks and that was and it was disappointing in the last season because we didn't get to go to France as often or it was just for four or five days. And it was more fun we were there for a couple of weeks because it was just fun. Mm. And then everyone and the crew were so wonderful. So it was, big, it was much more of a family type thing. And, it, um, and we'd all hang out. The, there was a football pitch next to our trailers. So when it was really sunny and we weren't filming, you'd, have, you'd only film for a couple of hours, you have a couple of hours off. We just uh, hang out and play football in our in our gear, oh. and then then go on set, and then there'd be loads of people there and Pierre Fonds, and it kind of was super fun because there's just all these people there and having a great time. It was like some kind of carnival, and then you get on a horse and you know say a yeah. few lines about 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 something, and then pick up your sword and like cool, we're <laughs> off to find dragons or whatever the hell's happening, <laughs> and it was great. <clears throat> and then that was that was the most fun because it was it was just like being a being a big kid and being on an adventure camp all the yeah. time. So. Uh, I mean, like, come on! I, I, I said uh, this to Katie. Like, uh, I was obviously rewatching it now, uh, and I, I think I love it so much because it's just so pure, and yeah. and it's just such a fun experience. And and you can tell that you guys had a fun time making we it. And... You know, we just say, just say, do, do you want to get on these great, great, great big horses and just kind of, you know, you're going you're to trot out the courtyard, then we're going to go into a forest, and we're going to we're going to talk with magic or not talk with magic, whatever. And it's like, yeah, great. You know, it was great. Yeah. We, had, we had the best time. It was that's that was the most fun. Ah, I can tell. It's it's so nice to to know about these things, honestly. Um, and then uh, I think we're gonna uh, jump. Well, I I have weird questions usually. Katie weird questions. Has the I wanna, ones. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> you've asked a couple questions, I'm gonna cut in. Yes, and say, go. Um, uh, I'm just wondering if you've been watching anything in particular recently that you can recommend to us. I, we watched do like in, to... Yeah, I watched Invasion on Apple. Oh and, yeah. Oh and, oh and, god. And I, I really, and I really liked it. You did? I thought it was oh. brilliant. Yeah. No. <laughs> he was not I mean, a I, 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 don't, I don't see not, what, what not. I mean, I, it's, it's, I like slow sci-fi that kind of takes a while to build up. You know, it's, I thought the acting in it was brilliant. I like that as well, but I was very disappointed right at the beginning because they advertised this as being a Sam Neill-led <laughs> TV show and yeah, he but, freaking dies in the yeah, first episode. But that's what they do, which, but you're still, you, you should know this. You're the Sean Bean of, of extras. You should I know about that. You know, but it's you know so they kill off Sean Bean in the first episode of everything. Uh, I actually disagree with you. I, I thought I thought it became a very it did it became a very different type of show. Um, but I thought it was brilliant. I, I I really liked it because I didn't really know what was happening. I thought the acting was great and I really enjoyed it. And because also it doesn't tell you what's happening, mm. and it was a really interesting character. So I thought the the Japanese girl was fantastic. 
I, so, yeah, I do agree with that. Yeah. I do agree with that. I, yeah. I mean, it's it's not a bad show. Don't get me wrong. I think I just got really frustrated with that first episode. I was like, ah, no, I love Samuel very much. I, so I, I was I, like, I, I, I'm disappointed you say that, and I can tell that Katie likes it. I not. actually hey, haven't Katie, seen it. Here's the thing. Uh, uh, but my parents watched it, and I think they, uh, if I remember correctly, you're gonna they're... love it. It's really nice and slow, and it's a really interesting character study, as opposed to being all about. It's really great, and I, I like think it's great. So, and it becomes really interesting and really weird. Don't listen to a word Lily says <laughs> Lily and I uh, are, it, it's this is why we like doing this podcast because um she, she will react incredibly sort of like reactionarily to things yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like immediately it's just like I hate this it's like okay give it a minute <laughs> Well, I, well, I mean, I, I, I don't know anybody involved in Invasion, actually. So it's actually, um, I know nothing about it. But I, and I knew nothing about it before I watched it. So, but I also do think it's one of those shows you need to binge because you get into, a, it's a very much of a mood type of a piece. Mm. It's very, um, it's very mood oriented. It's, I don't really know. I think I, I think I binged it in two periods. I think when it stepped back into it, it took a minute to get back into it because it's very specific. Get into the right rhythm of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it is, so it's one of those shows that you need to watch all in one kind of, over a weekend or something. Just get sick and mm. just watch it in two days. Well, I mean, I don't have a whole lot yeah. to do at the moment, so maybe uh, I've got, here's yeah. the thing, I've got. Yeah, cool, because I actually watched it like a week ago and I was actually ill for like a week. So I just, that was great, it was perfect for me. So I was just in go. bed. I was in bed eating like, you know, celebrations, feeling sorry for myself and watching Invasion and I thought it was brilliant. So, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I wasn't feeling sorry for myself and I watched it an hour and night, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. Mm. Be, I haven't be, finished you know. it yet, so you know it's. I mean, it's. I think it's like. I think it's like a lot of a lot of film and television stuff. It's very much about what you identify with, and also about the mood you're in when you watch things. Mm. You know, that's true. That is true. It's. I. I do think it's. It's a good show, but uh, yeah, it pisses me off. No, you hate it. It's fine. Don't worry. No, about I don't. It. Hate it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, don't, don't, don't backtrack now. <laughs> I only. I only have seen uh, the first four episodes, and then. Yeah. Because it, it came out weekly uh, yeah. on, on Apple TV. So I was like, okay. And then life got very busy uh, and I didn't catch up still. But they well, announced yeah, because, that they are dropping you saw, season. When you saw that Sam Neill never came back, then you're like, you're like, fuck this shit. Like, <laughs> okay, I'm not. Okay, that's yeah, such a like, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, But yeah, maybe I'll go because I'm, it, this week is very, we've got The Witcher coming out on Friday and that's kind of my first priority yeah, at the moment. That's Kate's priority. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll move on to other things. Yeah. So okay, yeah. Lily, go ahead yeah, with your yeah. weird questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, weird question time. Uh, if you would have a machine that could transfer you to any movie and you could play anyone you wanted, what movie would it be, and who would you play? Um, do you know? <clears throat> I probably want to want to do Women in Love. Um, you know the movie Women in Love. Mm-hmm. I'm not and, so and, and play the, and, <laughs> play the, and play the Oliver Reed part in Women in Love. I love that movie. Okay. Nice. You're both. You're both. You're both I'm googling because I've not heard of this. Movie <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's it's a beautiful movie which you definitely should watch. And uh, and yeah. Here's here's the second question: Is the TV miniseries the same thing, or because I see a TV miniseries about it. They made it in 2011? No, no, the original, no, yeah, this, this, is, is this is the Oliver Reed version. This is the original, the Oliver it's Reed It's the nine, version. okay. So. And who would you play? I'll tell you what year it is. Okay. It might be 1960. Um, it was 1970. So it was Alan Bates and Oliver Reed, and it was directed by Ken Russell. So 19, it's 1970. Um, I'd like to play the Oliver Reed part, but I'd also, I think the Alan Bates part, I, I just love that movie. I think it's a beautiful movie. So e- either part I would love to do, but the Oliver Reed part I thought was fascinating in Women I Love. It's a, uh, yeah. Uh, what, what, how would you describe the plot? I don't, what, what do you think it's about? We have to watch it. Oh, okay. All right, so you go into it blind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Fair enough. I know, I, I remember the title because this is my mom's favorite movie as well. I don't think I, I don't think I've ever seen it. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a it's an absolutely beautiful movie and the character is beautiful. Yeah. Um but but yeah, but you know, like there you go. You'll only know the answer to the question by watching the movie. Mm, I shall have to get my right. hands on it then. But that's completely fair. Uh, which, uh, now... which is how it should be in a movie podcast. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I'm actually terrible when it comes to movies. I'm my my, my... That's true. 
Um, I did so many things I, I should have seen and just absolutely have not. Um, and my wheelhouse is actually more in television. I, I kind of grew up more right. in television and, and, and uh, watching a lot of TV and stuff. So the, just the, the amount of time Lily spends is, going. Is, 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 is this your way of excusing yourself from watching the movie and passing it on to... to no, me? this is my way of <laughs> saying this is the <laughs> reason I haven't seen it, but like I can't what's, go. What's happening? It's fine. You just admit to it. It's fine. <laughs> I'm interested now. I will watch it. I'm just like so so bad at, at, at getting around to watching films. So I so mean, it, it, it's 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 a, it's a long movie, and you need a bottle of wine and, okay. and to sit down, and then you'll really appreciate it. That's yeah. good because she likes wine, yeah. so you know. <laughs> there you go. Then you're perfect. <laughs> it's, it's good. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it only took like a year for her to watch the new Planet of the Apes trilogy, which I begged her to watch for so long. <laughs> Thank you so much yeah, uh, for coming. Um, and uh, this was fun. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate yeah. you coming and hanging out with us. It's been yeah, of course, of course. Sorry, sorry for last week with the, with the mix up on that, but thank you for. <laughs> it's all right. I uh, it was uh, I was in bed when when your messages came through, and I found it to be quite amusing. So these things happen. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, it happens to all of us. Uh, and also, I will finish my sentence and say that Envision just got renewed for a second season so i will watch it <laughs> there you go oh invasion got renewed mm -hmm. yeah yes second I season is coming I'm so excited <laughs> yeah the, the, the only sucky thing is have to wait for another year to watch the fucking oh season. maybe even more who knows yeah. who knows but uh, i'm sure it's gonna work to wait uh owen thank you so much for coming we love pleasure. merlin we love, love your work uh and we can wait uh, i can't wait to watch your movie because katie already seen it i know i can't, I can't wait to watch your next movie wait. Sorry? I can't wait to watch your next movie whenever that is. Uh, yes, to go well, 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 Grey Elephant is very different. Grey Elephant is far more of a, a kind of a black, satirical, dramatic character study. Oh, I love nice. it. That yeah. sounds right up my street. Yeah. Okay. So it's Let's more along it. the lines of like Carnage or, or that type of thing. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I like then. Um, so take care and uh, hopefully we see you in the future. What we'll do is we'll talk when, when Grey Elephant's out. We'll release when you've watched that. Yes, please. We would love that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. We Let's would love that. that. It's a date. Pleasure. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.